harvest is ripe, and many are thirsting for the word of life. These words were spoken by one of the first missionaries to come to England in 1837. Many hundreds of people were baptized into the church during these early days, and very soon the stronghold of the church was established here in the British Isles. Most of the early members emigrated to America in search of a better way of life. And because of this, many members now living there today can trace their ancestry back to the British Isles. All but one of the prophets of the church have served missions here in the British Isles at some time during their lives. Also, they were born here or they can trace their ancestry back to this country. The missionary efforts over the past 130 years have brought great numbers of people into the church. Today, 1,400 missionaries serve the Lord throughout Great Britain and the church continues to grow. At the present time, the membership of the church stands at approximately 62,000 in Great Britain. Chapels like this one, which was recently completed, are taking their place in areas throughout the country alongside the traditional churches of the land. These new buildings are a sign of the progress and spiritual growth of the people of the British Isles. Many are ready and willing to listen to the gospel. During 1965, there were almost 4,000 baptisms. The church is a complete way of life. It provides spiritual nourishment as well as providing social activities. The prophet of the church today President David O. McKay. The noblest aim in life is to strive to live to make other lives better and happier. Browning sounds the keynote in Paracelsus when he says, there is an answer to the passionate longings of the heart for fullness. And I knew it. And the answer is this. Live in all things outside yourself by love, and you will have joy. That is the life of God. It ought to be our life. In Him it is accomplished and perfect, but in all created things it is a lesson learned slowly against difficulty. The Latter-day Saint family enter their chapel to watch or participate in one of the most important services held in the church, that of baptism. This evening, we welcome you all to this most important step in the life of Nigel, who has reached the age of accountability and is now prepared and ready to go down into the waters of baptism. Brother and Sister Manners with their daughter Carolyn have been members for two years. During this time, they have experienced a great spiritual growth in their family. As a family, they are closer to each other because love and prayer play an important role in their daily lives. They are gathered this evening on the happy occasion of their son Nigel's baptism. As Nigel enters the water in readiness to be baptized by his father, who holds the priesthood and the authority to baptize, we think of Christ's words when he said, 
He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. I feel so happy tonight as my son enters the waters of baptism. The gospel means so much to us in our family. I wish we could always enjoy this spiritual feeling. Congratulations, Nigel, on your baptism. You are really a member of the church now. How did you feel, Brother Manners? It was a wonderful experience, Elder, for me to baptize my own son. This is a day I'll never forget. You should be really happy now your family are baptized members of the church. The spirit of that meeting will be something you'll never forget. I really enjoyed this evening, and I would always like to feel this happy spiritual feeling, especially in our home. Would you both like to come next Tuesday evening and tell us just how we can do this? The following Tuesday, the elders visited the home of brother and sister Manners. Well, Nigel, do you still feel just as happy as you did at your baptism? Yes, I do. I have never forgotten my baptism. It will always be a special day in my life. In the church, we all have experiences which will mean a lot to us. Because of these happy events, we want to tell others about them. President McKay once said, Live in all things outside yourself by love, and you will have joy. Even you, Caroline and Nigel, can experience this same joy by telling your friends about the church. Can you tell us how we can tell our friends about the church? Yes, Caroline, I can tell you. Our prophet, President McKay, has asked us all to share the gospel with everyone we come in contact with. Do you mean we have to be missionaries like yourselves? Yes, but you don't have to give all your time as we do. You can be a missionary by your deeds and actions. Being an example of the teachings of the gospel is one of the finest ways to teach others. Brother and Sister Manners, the choicest blessing that a family can have is for the Spirit of the Lord to be in their home. You have that Spirit here, and I know that it will remain as you serve the Lord by sharing the gospel with others. I know the Spirit of the Lord that we so much enjoy is renewed each time we tell our friends of the gospel. As they learn of the truths of Jesus Christ, they will be entitled to the Lord's Spirit in their homes. I know that by living outside ourselves by love does bring us joy. Yes, I think you're right. It will bring us great happiness to share it with our neighbors. I can see now why you look so happy. Sharing the gospel must keep the Spirit of the Lord with you and bring you continued joy and happiness. Yes, I'm sure we could be happy too if we could share the gospel with others. Let's start by telling the Hendon family. I'm sure they will listen to what we have to say. So the elders have helped brother and sister Manners and their children to realize the joy which can be theirs by sharing the gospel with their friends. The family and elders kneel together to give thanks to the Lord and seek his guidance in directing them to bring the gospel into the lives of others. The family discuss their plans at breakfast and begin to feel the happiness which comes with sharing the gospel.
I think I'll start today. I usually see Mr. Hendon after work, so I could take the opportunity to ask him to come to our house to hear about the gospel. I know. I'll talk to Julie Hendon today at school and ask her about coming to see the film that the elders told us about. When I walk across the park this afternoon with David, I might see Mrs. Hendon and Andrew. Then we can sit and talk while the children play. The family asked for the Lord's help with their plans to bring the gospel to the Hendon family. Prayer brings the family close together and helps them to feel the spirit of the Lord with them. Brother Manners meets Mr. Hendon outside his office after work and they walk to the bus stop. Some time ago, Mr. Hendon, I explained a little to you about our church. Would you like to know more? I've often wondered about the things we discussed. I think I would. Let's arrange an evening when we can all meet at my home, and I'll tell you more about it. That would be nice. I would like to come, and I'm sure my wife would. Sister Manners leaves her home a little earlier, as she too is anxious to speak to Mrs. Hendon, knowing at heart that she will be successful as she goes forward to do the Lord's work. During their conversation, Sister Manners soon found an opportunity to discuss the church with Mrs. Hendon. We would like you to come with your husband and children and watch a slide film about our church. Two young men from the church will be there to present it and answer any questions you might have. Yes, I would like to. Don and I have often discussed religion. From what you've told me about your church, it sounds very interesting, and I would like to know more about it. Sister Manners now begins to feel the joy of sharing her testimony with Mrs. Hendon, and is happy knowing that Mrs. Hendon has accepted the invitation. Today seemed an extra long day at school for Carolyn. She was longing for the end of school bell to ring, so she could meet Julie Hendon and talk to her, knowing that her father in heaven would help her. Julie, can you come to our house to watch a film? It's a colour film about our church. Yes, I'd like to, Caroline. They had all played their part in bringing the Hendons to their home, and now they are prepared for this special evening for their friends. The film which was shown to the Hendon family portrayed the beautiful truths of the gospel and told of the teachings of Christ. It also told them about a young boy of 14 who wanted to learn the truth and how he came to serve the Lord by restoring the gospel. The film left a deep impression on Mr. and Mrs. Hendon. The evening had been a success for both families. I hope that you have enjoyed this evening and I'd like you both to go away determined that you're going to pray about the things that you have seen and heard this night. The gospel of Jesus Christ has been restored in these latter days, and that the church today is led by a prophet, that Joseph Smith restored the church. I'm so grateful to have this knowledge, and we have shared so many wonderful blessings in our family because we are members of his church. And I'd like you both 
to join with us and share these same blessings. Thank you for asking us over. We've enjoyed this evening together. Well, Dom, I'm glad you came. We would like to meet you on Sunday and take you out to church. Thank you. We would look forward to coming with you. Going to church on a Sunday is a beautiful experience, which is a joy to share with others. At the door, members are willing to greet the visitors with their warmth and friendship. The sacrament service left a lasting impression on the investigators, adding to their enthusiasm to learn more of the church and its principles. As the weeks passed by, Brother and Sister Manners took the Hendons to various meetings and activities where they could see the church in action. Each time they attended, they were more impressed with the spirit of the meeting. Carolyn and Nigel enjoyed the company of Gary and Julie Hendon in their Sunday school class. Here, they learned how they could play an important part in living the gospel and learning the teachings of Jesus Christ. The elders sit in the home of Brother and Sister Manners, where they teach the Hendon family the beautiful truths of the Gospel. The family begin to be touched by the spirit of these truths, and begin to learn much of the restoration of the Gospel, and of the joy and lasting happiness it can bring into their lives. But most of all, they are moved by the example set by the Manners family. Well, I feel I've learned so much already about the church from these lessons. Yes, so do I. But I think we have learned more from the love and friendship of the members we have met. I think you're right. Everyone seems so willing to help to teach us the truth. The prayer Brother Hendon offered that night, after their meeting, reflected his growing testimony of the Gospel. After accepting all the teachings of the elders, Brother and Sister Hendon and their family enter the chapel to attend their most important meeting, their baptism. This night will always be remembered by them, and by Brother and Sister Manners and their children. Brother and Sister Hendon, with Gary and Julie, are immersed by Brother Manners in the waters of baptism. They each experience and feel the importance of this occasion in their lives and are now prepared to serve the Lord as members of His Church. The warmth and happiness of the baptismal service is still with the family the next day when they are confirmed members of the Church in the Fast and Testimony movement. I would like to bear my testimony. Today I, I have been confirmed a member of this church and I know that it is the true church and I am so thankful that brother and sister Manners have thought of our family and asked us to come to their home and tell us about the church and that they've shown us slides and really taken an interest in our family. I'm very glad too that Sister Manners has taken me to Relief Society. For here I found the, the love and friendship of the other members. And I see how the members all work together for the good of the whole church. And that I do know that this is the true church. And I say this humbly in Jesus' name. Amen. As a new member of this church, 
I find it difficult to bear my testimony. But I would like to thank everyone who has been concerned in teaching me and my family the gospel, especially the elders and the many friends whom we have made already in this church. I hope to learn a great deal more about this wonderful gospel. I feel in my heart that this is the true church of Jesus Christ and that President McKay is the true prophet of the Lord in the, on the earth today. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The joy which comes with sharing the gospel with its rich spiritual blessings can be continued by bringing friends and relations into your homes so that they too can have the opportunity of hearing the truths and learning from the discussions. As the months pass by, brother and sister Hendon learn and progress with the Manor's family and reflect on the statement made by President McKay, live in all things outside yourself by love and you will have joy. The temple president greets Barry and Sister Hendon on their first visit to the temple, where they will be sealed and married for time and all eternity. What a joyous occasion this is for Brother and Sister Manners, as they too enter the house of the Lord with Brother and Sister Hendon. As they enter the temple, Brother and Sister Hendon sense the importance and spiritual meanings behind the seeming of their children to them and their own marriage for time and eternity. The plan for a prophet, followed by brother and sister Manners, has brought the Hendon family to the house of the Lord and to eternal happiness. President Martin Peterson, a member of the Quorum of Twelve Apostles, now testifies to this divine program. No one can be more effective in doing missionary work than the members of the church themselves. Why is this? Because you local members already have the love and confidence of your friends, and they will believe you when you talk with them. Our missionaries come to your neighbors as strangers in their midst. People naturally are somewhat hesitant about talking with strangers, but you, who live among your neighbors, are well known to them. They know they can trust you. When you invite them to hear the missionaries, their fears are allayed because they do trust you. They know that you will not lead them astray. Through this confidence in you, they will learn to have confidence in the missionaries also and will seriously consider what they say. It is not necessary that you be skilled teachers of the gospel. Under our program, the missionaries will do the teaching. Your part would be to approach your friends, tell them about the gospel, and invite them to listen to the missionaries. This will make you an important part of the missionary program. It will also make it possible, as you see, for every church member to become a missionary. I testify to you and to all mankind that this work is true. The gospel has been restored in our day by the Lord himself. The Bible prophecies pertaining to this restoration have been fulfilled. Your assistance in this work will further the teaching of the gospel to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, as the prophets foretold. I bear you this testimony in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord has gained in life is to strive to live to make every life better and happier. There is an answer to the passionate longings of the heart for fullness. 
And the answer is this. Live in all things outside yourself by love. And you'll have joy. Well, and this is my glory, but perhaps I may be an instrument in the hands of God to bring some soul to repentance. And this is my joy. <laughs>